Family, a prayer that we pray together is a powerful prayer. So please pray together with me our EWTN family prayer. Today we pray for the church in Australia and Oceania. Almighty God and Father, we worship you who have given all things their place and time. We ask you to bless the continent of Australia and Oceania. Enrich these lands with an abundance of heavenly graces to prepare souls for the gospel. Let the transmissions of EWTN bring many to faith and conversion so that they might have life and have it to the full in Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Take this, all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood do this in memory of me
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Et in terra pax omnibus, od e voluntatis, gladamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus Thank you. 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. The Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your loins after you. I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. It is he who shall build a house for my name, and I will make his royal throne firm forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. your descendants forever and set up your throne through all ages. He will call out to me my Father, my God, the rock of my salvation. I will keep my faithful love for him always, 
with him my covenant shall last. The Son of David will live A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, it was not through the law that the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants that he would inherit the world, but through the righteousness that comes from faith. For this reason, it depends on faith, so that it may be a gift, and the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not to those who only adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into being what does not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, thus shall your descendants be. That is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Dominus vobiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Matteo. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. 
She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. Verbum Domini. Today's gospel gives us an insight into St. Joseph's role as guardian of the Redeemer. St. Matthew gives us an Annunciation account from St. Joseph's perspective. We are probably more familiar with the Annunciation account from St. Luke where he recounts the angel Gabriel appearing to the Virgin Mary with the salutation, hail full of grace. The angel also tells Mary, do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. The angel also tells Saint Joseph, be not afraid. The account that we heard today from St. Matthew says, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Both Mary and Joseph had similar messages from the angel Gabriel. Both were asked to make an act of faith, a complete act of surrender and total obedience to God their savior. At the center of their act of faith is the truth that this child conceived in the womb of Mary was of the Holy Spirit. The origin of this child was not of human origin. It was of God's origin. It was God's initiative. St. Joseph was asked to make a similar act of faith that would have eternal consequences. Just as Mary's act of faith changed the course of human history by bringing the Redeemer into the world, St. Joseph's act of faith was very similar, an act of total surrender to God. It had been prophesied that the Messiah would be from the house of David. St. Joseph, by naming the Messiah, fulfilled this prophecy. The angel said to him, you must name him Jesus. It was an extremely important custom at the time for the father to confer the name upon his child. The first reading from 2 Samuel 7 is a prophecy about the Messiah. The Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you. Sprung from your loins, I will make his kingdom firm. It is he who will build you a house for my name. And I will make his royal throne firm forever. I will be a father to him and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. This prophecy is also a reference to St. Joseph. The gospel reading is the end of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, son of God, 
son of David. It can be overlooked that St. Joseph was in direct line of the descent of the Davidic kings. What does this mean? 500 years after the last Davidic king had been placed in chains and taken to Babylon, carried to Babylon in 587 BC, the house of David was not dead. As we said in the responsorial psalm, the house of David shall live forever. When Cyrus, king of Persia, defeated the Babylonians and permitted the Jews to return to Jerusalem after the captivity in Babylon, the Jews built the holy city over again. The temple had been destroyed. They rebuilt the temple. But no son of David was permitted to sit upon the throne to govern over Israel as once had been before the Babylonian captivity. But God was faithful to his covenant. God is always faithful. The house of David did not die, but lives on. St. Joseph was the living heir who stood in direct line to that throne. According to the genealogy of Jesus Christ, you see this, the direct line to the throne of David was Joseph. Why is this important? By St. Joseph adopting Jesus, accepting the message of the angel, and becoming the legal guardian and father of the Lord Jesus Christ, St. Joseph leaves to Jesus all rights, all privileges to the throne of David. I realize this is a lot to wrap your heads around. The house of David shall live forever. And no matter what being thrown into captivity for 587 BC for almost 500 years, no king was on the throne of David and despite that, God is faithful to his promises. The house of David was still alive. The mission of St. Joseph was integral to the plan of human salvation. In both cases, Mary's Annunciation and the Joseph's Annunciation the urgency of the message of the angels suggests that God had a mission for them that would be impossible for them to accomplish without him. Without God's help, it would have been impossible. But with God's help, with his assistance, Anything is possible. And this includes your life and my life. Anything is possible. St. Joseph, perhaps, is one of the most silent figures in all of sacred scripture. His silence of speech, however, does not mean that he did not play a prominent role in guarding, protecting, and providing for his foster son, the redeemer of mankind, the Lord Jesus. St. Joseph played an active role, most of all by his obedient faith in responding unhesitatingly to the message of the angel Gabriel 
He gives no response as Mary did. Mary, be it done unto me according to your word. Mary gives a response. But Joseph gives a response that is not spoken, but he simply, the gospel says, when Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. His actions speak louder than words in this case. His act of faith was a total surrender of his life to God. A total surrender to the mission that the Lord had entrusted to him. Father Frederick Miller, who taught most of us in seminary, most of the friars, writes in an article that he wrote on St. Joseph, our father in faith. And I might add that this document is free on the Knights of Columbus website, Joseph, our father in faith. I encourage you to read it. Father Miller says, quote, the accounts of the Annunciation to Mary in the Gospel of Luke and to Joseph and Matthews reveal that God accomplished his greatest work through the cooperation of two human beings, through the obedience of faith. He says, Jesus, the eternal Son of the Father, became the Son of Mary through her faith in the word proclaimed by Gabriel. In this readiness to receive Mary into his home as his wife to adopt her unborn child, Joseph joined Mary in her act of faith in the heavenly origin of the child. Through Mary's faith, the Son of God became man. Through Joseph's faith, Mary's child became the son of David, the Messiah of Israel. This is very important. Through Joseph's faith, Mary's child became the son of David. Again, the son of David will live forever. Father Miller's main point and something that he drilled into us in most of our theology classes is that God values our free and total cooperation in his plan. God does not force his plan upon humanity. God respects the freedom of the individual. In this case, the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph, it was their cooperation and the obedience of faith that brought about God's greatest work, the incarnation of the only begotten Son of God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us by the cooperation of two human beings by their total surrender and commitment to Almighty God. What does this mean for us? What does Mary's act of faith, what does Joseph's act of faith, what does God working in their lives mean for us? St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary, for that matter, are examples for us for what it means to obey and to cooperate with the will of God and to surrender, to have faith, to have hope, to have charity. Have we submitted our entire lives over to the care of God? And let's be clear, this is not a submission that makes us somehow less human, but a submission that truly makes us free. When we submit ourselves to God, we become truly free, 
truly ourselves. The Blessed Virgin's and St. Joseph's faith was not part-time. It was a total and unwavering commitment to God. It was a faith that puts its hands to the plow and doesn't look back. A total and unwavering commitment. Their faith was a faith that had God at its origin, its purpose, and its goal all throughout its origin its purpose and its goal is god all throughout their lives can we say that about our lives their faith was pure and unwavering because there was no hint of selfishness they did not put up obstacles to doing the will of God. Both the Blessed Virgin and St. Joseph teach us what it means to be a committed disciple of Jesus Christ, period. They teach us, they show us. And quoting Father Miller again, he says, quote, St. Joseph his response to God's word spoken to him by the angel, his total trust in God's power to save, and his tender love of Mary, her dear son. St. Joseph is the paradigm of the obedience of faith, hope, and love for every member of the church. Through his heavenly intercession, St. Joseph obtains for the church a share in the obedience of faith. Throughout the catechism, we, we see this language, the obedience of faith, all throughout the catechism. It's very precise language. It could be very confusing to understand. Well, what is the obedience of faith? What does that mean? If you want to see a concrete example of what it looks like, you look at St. Joseph. You look at the obedience of faith of St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary. This is what the obedience of hearing the word of God and putting it into practice. And on total, a total unwavering commitment to God. With fatherly love, he pleads that each member of his family on earth may become may come to share in the knowledge and love of messiah who was uniquely his son saint joseph saint joseph glorious husband of mary and foster father of the son of god pray for us that we may obtain a deeper faith a deeper trust and obedience to whatever God may be asking of us. We ask this through the intercession of Mary, the mother of God, in the sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Through the intercession of St. Joseph, let us offer our petitions to our Father, who grants peace to those who trust in him. That St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church, will guide and protect our Holy Father in his work of proclaiming the good news of salvation to the entire world. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are unemployed and cannot find work, and for the disabled and the sick, that through the intercession of St. Joseph, the Lord will assist them in their needs. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer that every father may see in St. Joseph a patron and model of holiness. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That parents and children will imitate the love of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph in the Holy Family. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That through the intercession of St. Joseph, those who die today may have a holy and peaceful death. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Through the intercession of St. Joseph and also St. Josephat, the patron saint of Ukraine, we pray for an end to the war in Ukraine. We pray for all those refugees that are fleeing the country. We pray for their fa families we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, you entrusted to St. Joseph the mission of guarding Jesus and Mary, your two most precious treasures. Grant that he may also be our guardian and protector, leading us always toward the goal of our heavenly homeland. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We pray, O Lord, that just as St. Joseph served with loving care your only begotten Son, born of the Virgin Mary, so we may be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dominus Vahobiscum. Sorsum corda. Sagamos Domino Deo Nostro. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God and on the solemnity of St. Joseph to give you fitting praise to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten son who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. 
Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, and all things who may be defended by your protecting help, through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium fidei. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. 
In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high and ascend to your divine majesty, so that all of us who do this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. To us also, your servants, for those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us to beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Per ipsum et cum ipso ad in ipso, est tibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, in unitate Spiritu Sancti, omnes honor et gloria, per omnia saecula saeculorum. Precepti salitari bus moniti et divina institutione formati, audehemus dicere. Pater noster, vires in genis, Nos quesimus domni ab omnibus malis, da propitius pacem in diebus nostris, ult ope misericordia tui adiuti, et abacato simos semper liberi, et ab omni patribatione securi, expectantes piatum spem, et aventum salvatoris nostri, Jesu Christi. Domine Jesu Christe, qui dedixi apostolis tuis, pacem unlenc vobis, pacem meum do vobis. Neber speeches, pacata nostra, sed fidem ecclesi tuae, eum quae secundum voluntatem tuam, pacificar quadenare digneris, qui vivis et regnas in saecula saeculorum. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum. Et
Ece agnus Dei, ece qui tole peccata mundi, beati quod cenum agne vocate sunt, Domine non sum dignus, od in tres subtecto meum, sed tantum dic verbo, et sinavitur anima mea. Well done, good and faithful servant. Come share your master's joy. For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the blessed sacrament, we offer the following prayer. O Jesus, since I cannot now receive thee under the sacramental veil, I beseech thee with a heart full of love and longing to come spiritually into my soul through the immaculate heart of thy most holy mother, and abide with me forever, thee in me, and I in thee, in time and in eternity, in Mary. Amen.
the man who deals generously and lands, who conducts his affairs with justice. Justice stands firm forever. His might shall be exalted in glory. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning. Let us pray.
Defend with unfailing protection, O Lord, we pray, the family you have nourished with food from this altar. As they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph, and graciously keep them safe, your gifts among them, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Prayer for vocations. God our Father, who wills that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of your truth, we beg you to send laborers into your harvest and grant them grace to speak your word with all boldness, so that your word may spread and be glorified, and all nations may know you, the only God, and him whom you have sent, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of the Americas, Mary, Mother of the Franciscan Missionaries of the Eternal Word, pray for us.